guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome if you're a returning subscriber you know the drill already my name is glory g to the l to the o r y let's get it today's video as you can see by the title already i'm going to be talking about the things i wish i knew before moving to the uk for uni so yeah without further ado let's get into the video like real quick um the first one is finances i wish i knew more about finances and i'm talking in the sense of the value of money like here in the uk because i remember like the very first time i came i didn't have obviously like i didn't have an account a bank account yet so i just had like cash and till now i don't i don't even remember what the hell i did with the money like i just knew that it was gone I, like i remember just going into like pound land and i was like oh my god everything here is one pound i'll just be buying and buying and buying but like it did occur to me like converting this into naira <laughs> and then i said i got to a phase where i started converting like how much i was spending in pounds in naira and i literally if you do that <laughs> if you do that just know that you're not going to buy anything the second one is language barrier <laughs> <laughs> i remember <laughs> before i came i was thinking ah, is it not english they're speaking there like what's the big deal it's english yes, they're speaking it's english i speak i grew up learning english so like what's the big deal i was in for a rude awakening let's just put it like that <laughs> so i came here and the first because i did foundation first and i remember going to my one of my classes i don't remember exactly what class it was and this teacher he was first of all his accent was so thick i remember the first time we talked i was like eh? <laughs> i was confused i was like what's going on i just looked around everybody was just minding their business i was like what's this man talking about i had no idea what well i, I picked up some words but like I didn't understand what he was saying. I was like, I don't understand. Is it not English that he's speaking? Like, it's English they taught me in school. I don't know. It was, nah. It was, I was, it was an eye opener. And then what I started doing at the time was, after the class, I would just like email him like a bunch of questions. Like, cause like, I didn't understand what he was saying. The third one is the food. Now, <laughs> if you're British and you're watching this, this don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Don't be offended. I'm not. I'm not bashing British food. Their food is quite bland. I don't know how. <laughs> no offense. I don't know how to explain it. But and they don't really have a lot of variety. They have. They don't really have a lot of variety. They just have variety of potato, grilled, fried, mash. They, baked just potatoes these people love potatoes and chicken they can eat chicken and meat as a meal i i was just like huh like you see they you see food is ready and what you see is chicken breast probably like mashed potatoes and like broccoli i'm just like is that it <laughs> Because I did foundation and we were catered to, so the school was providing like food for us. And when they would just bring the food, I'm just like, you don't mean it. Is it? <laughs> Is this it? <laughs> ah, Jesus. Like every time I was sent to eat, I was just like, oh my days. But that was obviously, that was because like I didn't really know my way around. I didn't know like places to actually go and get nigerian food because best believe there is nigerian food you just have to know where to go and get it you just have to know like the different markets to go to and you know your whereabouts but at the time like i didn't know so i would just be eating the thing like there's not a lot of spices there's no much going on and me i i like spice i like pepe i like seasoning i like you know it did have taste flavor I didn't really get that. I just found myself like buying food a lot of time to eat. And it was just like, oh my God. But I think it, it got better like when I came to uni. Um, because then there was a kitchen where I could actually go and cook what I want. And then I, you know, I found out places where I could go and buy like Nigerian food stuff for me to cook. I feel like 
bro the first year <sighs> oh my days was nothing to write home about the fourth one is house and accommodation like <laughs> their houses here is so small like <laughs> it's as if and like coming from nigeria like we have houses where there is just one house in a compound or like one or two houses in a compound but you don't really get that here here is all the buildings look alike that they are usual brick and then it's just very few that have the kind of houses that we have in nigeria and maybe the creme de la creme of the society that have like the big houses but majority of people here have the same type of houses like from the outside everything looks the same obviously the the interior will be different because different people have different tastes but the out the houses are the same like if you don't know a place and you're looking for somebody's house you will get literally you will get lost because you cannot differentiate it from the other person's house and the sizes of the rooms see <laughs> when i came and i entered my room i was just like everything was small room bed bathroom everything was small i was like how do these people breathe in these rooms? I call my days. Obviously, as I got into uni, I tried to look for like bigger rooms, but you almost never find anything as big as our rooms in Nigeria. It's just like, the fifth one is no AC. <laughs> First of all, the weather here is very temperamental. Like you don't even know what you're getting. Today is sunny tomorrow rain heavy rain is falling next tomorrow is this is so windy like in a day you can get wind sunshine and rain i kid you not like hell like, if you're going out dress up <laughs> except in the deep deep winter where you know that okay it's just going to be cold and you know summer where you know that yeah it's going to be hot but anything in between it's like just if you're going out Dress in such a way that if it's cold, you have jacket. If you get so, you can take off the jacket and what you're wearing is a bit, it's just, it's a lot. Back to the not having AC. I, I remember I came and I was like looking around the room. I saw the heater, but like, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't really occur to me, oh, that, oh, that was a heater. I just thought, I was just wondering like, what is this? And then I was looking around like, you know how we have our ACs now hanging like on the wall somewhere up or like a standing one. I was kind of looking out for that, but like, I didn't find. I was just like, I don't understand. So when it's hot, what am I going to do? Like, these people don't have AC. I was thinking that like, why don't they have something that you can use as both AC and heater? And you change it according to the weather. Like, how do they not have AC? Is this a joke? Hey God, dude. these people really don't have AC. Nah, when it's now summer, you now have to go and look for where to buy fan. Sometimes the fan doesn't even help. Sometimes the fan is quite useless because you just stay and be blowing hot air. It's almost like, what the hell am I going to do? The sixth one is transportation. You see this country, you will walk. You will go waka tire. <laughs> so like Nigeria, where? you are going from if you go from a to b you are going inside car you will walk except you have your own car of course transportation if you're not taking the train you are walking if you have plenty money like that you'll be taking taxi everywhere but at some point that taxi you're taking you you will call yourself to order let me reduce it and be taking trains or be, or be walking because <laughs> the seventh one is tea is not tea I learned this the hard way. You know normal tea in Nigeria, overtin, milk, milo, kind of thing. I came here and they were asking, oh, do you want some tea? And I was like, yeah, thank you. I took the tea, drank it. Omo, you want to pour that thing back inside the cup eh? Nasty! <laughs> British people love their tea. And I've come to 
I've, I've come to get used to it and kind of like it. But in the beginning, I was just like, it's not milk and milo or milk and, and overtin. It's not. I was just like, what is this rubbish that this woman gave to me? <laughs> I just poured it back inside the cup and kept the cup. I didn't even care if anybody saw me because it, it, it tasted nasty. It tasted nasty. Plus, the fact that I don't like their milk. Like, I don't like the milk that you get in those um, cartons. Now, I drink tea, but it has to have some sort of flavor, like lemon and ginger. The eighth thing I wish I knew is that queuing is a culture. Like, they have a queuing culture. <laughs> it's not like in Nigeria where, oh, you can cut the line, get connection. Oh, I know that person, and you walk in front of the line, the person sorts you out, and you go, and you pay the person or something along those lines. If you come in, old woman, no, old man, no, young Pekino, no, everybody is on the queue. Even if the queue is from the organization to outside, you will stay there and wait till it's your turn. If you try and if you try and walk past anybody, the way they, the eye, they will look at you, eh? Nobody will tell you, you just go back to the queue. They don't joke with it. They queue for literally everything. They queue. And it's, it's I guess, like, it's nice because they're, it's it's organized and everybody knows what's going on but yo <laughs> those times i'll just come and it just didn't occur to me that you know you have to give for everything i'll just walk in front of the line and everybody be looking at me like and then i realize i'm like i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> they'll be what yeah, jerry just walk back because Nobody has time for that. <laughs> the ninth one is they have a smiling culture. Like, that's just what I, I would say. They have, there's a smiling culture. <laughs> like, I was I was in school premises and then I was just walking to class. And one woman passed me and she, and she smiled. Like, and then I was, I was just, I just looked at her. I didn't do anything. I kept on walking. Somebody else passed me and smiled again. I was like, What's going on? Is there something on my face? So I ran to the toilet to check, like, is there something on my face? But there was nothing on my face. I was like, ah, what's going on? Like, I don't eventually got used to it that it's just like saying, hi, hello, like, I see you kind of thing. So now, as I'm walking, anybody I see, I do. Because before, I just used to keep straight face, walk, go to where I'm going to and come back. But now, anybody I see, and it's very quick, it's like one second, like, <laughs> You keep it moving everybody back to what they were doing the last one is they are polite no i'm not saying it's everybody of course not but like a lot of them are very polite like they're polite to a fault they will insult you in a very polite manner <laughs> like you just say excuse me what you've just done is utterly stupid and you'll be thinking yeah <laughs> Sounds so sweet, you don't even know that <laughs> they are insulting you. But <laughs> but back in the motherland, you just do anyhow. Somebody will just tell you, you did Chris. I be mean, all these screws for your head don't come out. <laughs> that one, you know that you know that yes, you are just being silly. But obviously, you have some people that are, that's not as nice. But yeah, a lot of them are just like that so yeah that brings us to the end of the video i hope you enjoyed watching it um as usual please like comment share subscribe and also follow me on my social media platforms i'll put them either on the screen or in the description box and yeah i will see you guys in my next video bye